Let's take a look at what the papers also are saying. Begin a look at the papers this morning with the Daily Trust newspaper leads with the same story. Tears a slain military personnel buried in Abuja. Look at the riders. Heartless people took away our breadwinners. That's ascribed to the families. Deceased officers get national honors. Kids get scholarships. Details are on page four of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. The pictures on the front page definitely speak more than a thousand words. And below the pictures, Rescued Kuriga students to reunite with families today. Details on the inside pages of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. The same story leads the front page of the Nigerian News Direct today. Delta killing, Tinubu grants scholarship, free housing to families of slain soldiers, tasks community chiefs to aid military in fishing out killers. Details on page two. A couple of papers tell the same story quite differently this morning. The Daily Times newspaper, for instance, leads with Okwama killing. Slain soldiers left behind pregnant widows, 21 orphans. That's according to the Chief of Army Staff. Tinubu offers scholarships, housing to families of slain soldiers. That picture also shows you the burial ceremony of the Nigerian Army personnel killed while responding to a distress call during the crisis between Okwama and Okoluba communities in Delta State. Uh, this event held at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja yesterday. The new telegraph is even more vivid. Okwama killing, three of ten widows, four, five, eight months pregnant. That's according to the Chief of Army Staff. Twenty-one children now orphans as 17 slain soldiers laid to rest. Military vows to hunt down perpetrators of violence. FG offers scholarships, housing to bereaved families. Killers of 17 military personnel won't go unpunished. That's also ascribed to the president. Blueprint dwelling on the same story this morning leads with some kind of appeal. Tidubu to army on Okwama fallen heroes. Pay entitlements to three pregnant widows, seven others, 21 orphans in 90 days. The writer says, confers posthumous honors on slain soldiers, offers houses scholarship to families. CDS, COAS, assure military won't be demoralized, vow justice for victims. The outcry of the family is what the Vanguard newspaper leads with today. At burial, grieving families of slain soldiers demand justice. Details you'll find on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper this morning, and some of the writers say, say criminals should not be allowed to live. I leave my son's killers to God, Major Obi's mother. My son was planning to marry before death came, says mother of Corporal Peter Hammond. Tinubu urges Okwama elders, chiefs to fish out culprits, ones military against reprisal attack on innocent people, and several other writers to that story. The Daily Independent newspaper leads with politics this morning. LP defies protests, holds national convention, re-elects Abure. Well, it will seem like the dust hasn't quite settled on that issue. Look at the riders. Reserves 2027 presidential governorship tickets for OB. OT urges Tinubu to take drastic steps to save economy from collapse. That's the lead story of the Daily Independent newspaper. Of course, it also has the Okwama killing story right there. The leadership newspaper is next. And what do we have? Convention neck meeting. Opposition in disarray as PDP LP sink deeper. Details you'll find on page four. We didn't monitor Labour Party's convention. That's according to INEC. OB OT lawmakers absent. Subterranean forces controlling PDP leadership. That's ascribed to Senator Suswam. Of course, you, he was our guest yesterday on Sunrise Daily. The Guardian newspaper has this on its front page this morning, and it's also talking politics. 2023 election expenses a year after INEC 
APC, PDP, 14 others, mum on financial disclosure. Details of that you will find on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper this morning. The angle of the Guardian newspaper to the Delta killings is a quote ascribed to the president. Military carried out no reprisal in Okwama, other communities. And take a look at the Nigerian Observer this morning, Edo 2024. INEC confirms receipt of names of 17 political parties, Guba candidates, to publish full lists, March 30. That's the story of the Nigerian Observer today. And these are the lead stories of the papers this morning. And indeed, the lead, the leads on the papers are just the one on the Guardian newspaper is the one that takes the, how do you say it now? It's a story for me. Uh, a year after, 2023 election expenses. A year after, INEC, APC, PDP, 14 others, mum on financial disclosure. Mm -hmm. That story continues on page six. It's, and, you know, it's one of the things that a lot of pe people continue to talk about after the election. The monies that you raised, how were they spent? As if nobody, who audits the accounts? Are those uh, audited accounts made public? How do the party members know that there are contributions, where they contributed, where monies were raised from Nigerians? How do they know that the monies were effectively spent? We do, uh, we do remember the, that uh, allegation against the Liberal Party's leadership then about some monies missing. He took some money sent to the personal account and all of that. Clarity again. Uh, it would be good that some of these things are made public so that Nigerians and indeed the public will know that this is where we're going and this is where we're headed. That's, that's the guardian for me. Well, Niata, it's very difficult to ignore all of the coverage of the uh, burial of the soldiers yesterday, the four indeed. officers and 13 soldiers who were buried right here in the Federal Capital Territory. And as a result of the president attending, I mean, if you lived anywhere, around the federal capital territory. Maybe you had to use the airport road. You certainly will know that something was happening um, yesterday because, you know, of course, as a result of presidential movement, you know, citizens were asked to hold on. Thankfully, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, I think it was very well managed. Um, but seeing the pictures and, look, and hearing all that, all that transpired at, at the burial ground yesterday, I mean, one cannot help but be moved and you see it very generously covered on, on, on the front pages of all of the papers. And we will certainly will be delving into it much later in our discussion. But then take a look at what's on the front page of leadership newspapers this morning. They have this story. Um, of course, they're also varying on politics, which is the elite story. Opposition in disarray as PDP, Labour Party sink deeper. But this one is just right on top of the nameplate. Northern State Enrollment in Unity School drops and that's something that we need to be you know you need to take heed of and i think the leadership is trying to raise the alarm this morning that's not a headline that should be glossed over that is something that should be interrogated um what exactly is leading to this drop in enrollment in unity schools are people dissatisfied with the quality of education their children are getting in those schools are they dissatisfied with the security arrangement because we know that security has now become a hot button issue regardless of whether you're in the north northern region or in the southern region but more importantly in the northern region where we've seen a series of abductions so this is something that needs to be interrogated because it does have an impact on the future of these children uh, so that story on the front page of leadership newspapers northern state enrollment in unity school drops that stands out for me ayo well, yeah, um, again, like you, Malque, I can't ignore the major story on the front pages of at least five to eight of the papers we looked at today. The fact that, I mean, look at the, the front page of the New Telegraph, for instance. It's, it's very, very gory and very, very concerning at, at that. It's very, very, very concerning that three of the ten widows are four months, one, some four month, one four months pregnant, one five months pregnant, one eight months pregnant, and that there are now uh, widows suddenly, and that there are now 21 orphans among them. That's very, very, very concerning. I don't, I mean, I know that the president has made a comment, uh, that one you'll find on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper saying that the entitlements of the pregnant widows and the others, with, along with their 21 orphans, be paid within the, ne the next 90 days. We know that that has been done, but then let us also 
pay attention to how they are feeling right now. What psychotherapy are they getting now to at least stabilize? Because it's only when you, it's only those who feel it that know it. If you have never been a widow, you will not even know how these people are feeling. So let's spare, spare a thought for them, pray for them at this time. And then there is also that warning to the communities not to shield the perpetrators. I know that the, the army has come out with, uh, where there is some information that has been put out about those who are allegedly involved in this entire process. Let this not be one of those things that will be swept under the carpet. Let the military know, let Nigerians know that their lives are valued. And we should not just, for whatever exigency, ethnic, religious, political, none of that should come to play at this time. Let us value the life so that the labors of our heroes past indeed do not go in vain. It's the most important thing for me this morning, Mao Poyanyota. Oh, well, Ayo, indeed, there is so much out there, so much of pain, and the family members, the, the families of the deceased uh, military officers, our hearts are out there with our condolences immensely. And indeed, all that the president reeled out, their awards, their, their scholarships, as much as those are welcoming, there is no, there is no, um, how do you say it now? The, there's no the balm. pain, there's yeah. no balm for this, uh, this kind of pain. And, and some will say that they might find some level of solace if the perpetrators are eventually caught and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Yes, and certainly. the president reiterated that again, the chief of defense staff did, the, army, the chief of army staff, indeed practically everyone that spoke there an attack on these men who were out there on a peacekeeping mission. But then, that's where we'll have to end the a look at some of the dailies today. We'll take a moment and we'll return to delve into the crux of the conversation. And it's centered around the security of this nation, the lessons to learn and to ensure that the efforts and the labors of our heroes past are not in vain. We're back in a moment.